Hello, everybody. It's been a week since our program together in California. You go back to work, lots of stuff to take care of, responsibilities to show up. So I just wanted to put together a short reminder of some of the key ideas from last week, hopefully inspiring you and reminding you of things that you can put into practice and make them work, make your life work better for you. So the theme, the general theme, the spirit of leadership arose for me when I saw a lot of leadership training over the last 25 or 30 years. And oftentimes they missed the piece that I really felt was one of the most crucial, and that is the power of your presence. And, and as a part of that, you know, I, I shared that quote from Tom Peters that at one time I read on his blog, he, he, if he was going to change things, he would have spent more time helping people with this whole idea of self-awareness and self-reflection. So that's what we started with. Building some time into your day, into your schedule, to contemplate and reflect and to be clear. And what Tom Peters was saying is one of the most crucial things you have to know is how am I being perceived by other people? And so the other part of that is from a well-being standpoint, balance in your life, having time to reflect and, and contemplate what's driving the choices and decisions that you're making. Um, I talked to a friend yesterday and she's become really involved with uh, daycare for grandchildren. And there's parts of that she really doesn't like. And it constantly shows up because she keeps saying yes to it. Well, time for reflection is an opportunity for you to think about what are my priorities? What are the values that's most important for me to live? Um, let me stop and take an opportunity. If you think about if I was going to reboot my life, what are the things, the values, the ideas, and so forth that are really crucial for me to live in alignment with, not only professionally, but personally as well. So uh, the other part of that is if you're not actively planning, I've asked that question, more of your time is going into responding or planning. If you're not actively planning, one of the side effects of constantly responding is literally takes a crisis to get people to stop then they're forced to adapt and change and move forward in a different way. So to me, acting, choosing, deliberate intention of moving forward in a particular way is a much preferred way to live than constantly reacting to crisis. And you and I both know people that that seems to be a life habit. So uh, reflection, this is a photo from north of, of Ubud in Bali when I was out renting a motorbike and exploring the rice fields early, early one morning. So just keep that in mind, how important reflection is. And, you know, I've got a friend that uh, had an emergency surgery and wound up being at home for three or four weeks, couldn't do anything, forced reflection. And in hindsight, she realized she had been working too much. So here's a quick photo of Harry Potter. Remember my motorbike driver from Cambodia? No parents, no grandparents, no aunts or uncles. They were all killed, but he's smiling and happy all the time. And men in that language, remember, there's no vocabulary for past or future, but their life comes back and orbits around this now. And now is always our point of decision. And so I put his picture up here beside that one favorite quote, who you are, speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. Part of that is it's absolutely impossible for you to not have an influence. So not too long ago, I was at a hotel up in Wyoming. I glanced out the window and there was a surprise snowstorm last night. And so I'm like, well, I need to hurry up a little bit so I can get out and clean the snow off my car. Got my stuff together, went down to clean my car off so I could come back and have breakfast. My car was clean. It was cleaned by the manager of the hotel. That's an influence. Sitting in the lobby last week at Marriott Irvine, charging my phone and doing a couple last minute details. And I glanced up to see this man you know, we're dressed, he's a Marriott, dressed professionally, got a name tag on. He walked right over to me and asked, he's like, is everything okay? Do you need anything? And I stood up and, and we had a wonderful conversation. It's the manager of the property. And uh, I got a message from him thanking me for the conversation. I wrote back and thanked him for the same thing. And that time, that, that type of even brief, genuine, real, authentic connection is one of the things I miss when I come back here from traveling in other countries. It's just more prevalent traveling. Most powerful tool you have is your example. Who do you choose to be? How is it important for you to show up? What are the values that is crucial for you to live? You know, I was talking to a friend this morning. When I was going through graduate school and there was kind of this craziness going on of things that were mandatory but completely insignificant, 
And I came to the point in graduate school working toward my doctorate where I realized how far am I willing to bend without compromising my values? Because if I take an issue with every little thing that shows up, I'm not going to finish. And my ultimate objective is I want to finish and graduate and get my degree, but I want to do so in a way that I can remain genuine and authentic to what I feel is important. That was a really valuable lesson for me. So a couple more things. There's Sue. Uh, when her daughter was sick, she couldn't sell anything. She's like, I'm, that's okay. I'm still going to be happy. That's a mindset. Still going to be happy. And then we talked about uh, the lesson from Olaf working with an international hospitality group. And his feeling was he still has this challenge with young leaders feeling like, gosh, in order for me to be effective, people have to like me. Uh, yesterday, I heard a dialogue on a sports talk show about a professional sports team owner that just had a news conference and this person had, had made an announcement of some sort or other. And both of these guys immediately said, well, I'm immediately doubtful and suspicious of anything that comes out of their mouth. And they both agreed with that. And they said, it's odd because really warm, kind, compassionate, great human being, but they're so eager to please everybody that one day they'll say one thing that will never happen and a day or two later, that thing happens. And so they're really incongruent. So the opposite assumption of sorts is what Olaf said is really crucial for a leader. In order for you to be effective as a leader, I have to like myself when I'm with you. And so we had a little conversation around when you've had that experience, what is it that's caused you to like yourself when you've been with a leader? And so two lessons, one of them, what has happened that caused that for you? But the second part is, well, what are you doing is causing that to happen for other people. Do more of that. That's really important. The question, what leader has had the most positive influence on your daily life, comes from strength-based leadership. They ask 20,000 people this question, and they ask them to come up with three words to describe that person. So we did an exercise. They took all those words and put them together, and they wanted to find out what are the most common reasons people follow. That's what those words were all compressed kind of condensed down to four words. And the number one word on that list was trust. Followers follow leader because of trust. The other three, <clears throat> compassion, stability, and hope. Well, where there's a lack of trust, only one in 12 employees are fully engaged. So the idea for me is if you can relate to the three things that a leader has done that's had a lasting impact on your life, then turn that around and in your time of reflection, what are those three things for me? Um, I was in a coffee shop this morning talking to them a little bit about the same kind of idea, the same priorities that they have every single day. And then we got into uh, Greg McCown, a professor from Stanford, did research on success and why people aren't as successful the second time. And he said it's, it's odd, but you can literally attribute that demise to the fact that the first time when young entrepreneurs or new entrepreneurs are starting a practice, they're crystal clear on the three or four things that they have to do well. But once they've been successful, that comes turns into 10 or 15 things. You can't focus on 10 or 15 things. So the question is, what is essential in a world that if you're not clear on your priorities, lots of people around you are certainly happy to tell you what they should be. And secondly, the world's got all these demands like me, 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 come take care of me. This is important. And that's the question with the coffee shop this morning. They're going through a lot of change, employees, staffing, moving facilities and so forth. And I asked the, the store manager, the director of training and the chief roaster, are there three or four things that if you do these three or three or four things consistently well every single day, your business will succeed? And their answer was uh, twofold. It's like, yes. And right now, with all the change going on in our company, it's really hard to focus on those three things. When they get done, they come back and reflect. Those things are going to be crucial to their future. So that comment, if you're not disciplined in the pursuit of the essential, you'll be undisciplined in the pursuit of more. Here's the example. Best example I can think of. You know, 25 to 35 percent of two-car garages in America can't hold a car. And so it's important enough that Jim Collins actually in the book, How the Mighty Fall, that's one of the reasons that people who have been extremely successful and mighty fell because they got undisciplined in the focus on more. 
I worked with a company where they basically said that's what happened to them. So the thing is, a four leaf clover here is like, what are three or four things? If you could take three or four things and keep them handy, but take one thing that you want to focus on right now for your leadership ability, for your impact, for your ability to care for yourself, something that you do that has a positive impact. For example, we talked about the potential importance of keeping a success journal. Who's your worst critic? Not me. Well, if your own if your own worst critic is you, then how do you counter that by sitting down and taking focused, disciplined time to go, wait a minute, what am I doing that's working? Where have I been successful? What have I done lately that I want to acknowledge myself for? And I recommend to people keeping that success journal. And before the weekend, at the end of the week, end of the day on Friday, sit down and put down a couple of things. So you take that energy into the weekend with your family rather than this thought about how much you have to do. So wrap this up with a couple ideas. This photo is from Bacalar, south of Tulum. And the quote, Mary Oliver, tell me, what is it you plan to do with this one wild and precious life of yours? Your life is happening now, not someday. So how do you incorporate these ideas to make your life as rich, meaningful, and fulfilling right now at work and in your personal life? That's really important to me. Related to that is this quote that I, I carry around. This stands out for me. Everybody will die. Not everyone will live. You know, Victor Frankl was a survivor of the concentration camps. In one of his book, he wrote, the tragedy in dying isn't reaching the point of death and knowing you're about to leave your body. The tragedy is reaching that point <clears throat> and knowing you may not yet have begun to live. So get clear on your priorities and follow those. Pursue those. Last thought for me, I'm going to take a drink of my allergies been acting up. Here I am back. Joseph Campbell. The presence of vitality vitalizes. The presence of vitality vitalizes. What do you do this fulfilling that you're wholehearted about, that nourishes your soul, your spirit, your, your energy? The more that you do that, the more you have to share with everybody in the world around you. Finally, be yourself. Um, I had a friend today. It's like, I wanted to be so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, that's not a great idea. I'd like to be them. It's like, well, what you'd like to do is to build into your life what you see them as being capable of doing. So started out the presentation. Uh, Erica had her namaste on, her namaste uh, shawl on, whatever you call that. And so I'll wrap this up with a namaste. Awesome experience working with you all. Wish you the best and look forward to seeing you down the road at some point. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.